Good morning guys, it's Timmy, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install a Bison rooftop deck system. I'm really excited about this, and it's just a really cool way to do a deck on your roof or wherever, for that matter. First off, the Bison system is made down in Colorado, in Denver, and it was just delivered here the other day. So you can see it out there in all the pallets. First thing we have to do is get all the contents of the Bison system up on top of my rooftop way up there. So we're gonna use the boom and get that going. So when you go to order a bison decking system, you have to give them the exact dimensions of your roof and also the height that you need your deck to be. Once you give bison those measurements, they're gonna sketch up a plan in CAD and send that to you to approve it. And once all that's done and you paid for it, they ship it to you in all these crates over here. And in my case, this deck is about 850 square feet, so it's pretty big. They'll be shipping you a whole bunch of two by two planks here, and they can either be wood or tile, either one. I went for wood, and they have different styles to choose from. And they're gonna ship you these adjustable plastic pedestals, which all those tiles sit on top of. So they're really cool. It's supposed to be a really simple install. So when you guys get these crates, they're pretty heavy. Each one of these wooden tiles right here weighs about 18 pounds, and you multiply that times, you know, 200 something. Once we get everything up to the top of the roof, we're gonna stage it in kind of strategic areas, and we'll start installing it. So if you guys are using a boom or anything like this to lift, the capacity of most of these baskets is 500 pounds. I'm about 170, and these tiles are about 18 pounds each. Get 18 tiles in here, so it works out about right. Obviously, it's gonna take a while if you have 200 something tiles to get them up there 18 at a time, so let's get going. All right, guys, we're up here on the rooftop deck. We have none other than Maximus here today to help out with the rooftop deck install, at least to get started. And uh, this system is really cool. It's a two by two plank. You wanna hold this up for him, maybe? Yep. So you got a two by two plank. So on the bottom, you have these slats that hold up your deck planks. And uh, these are going to sit on top of this adjustable post, which is right here. And what you do, you spin these posts to get the height you want. And you can also spin the bottom of the post to adjust for the slope. So pretty cool to so see how it gets taller, make your deck more off the surface. And then you can adjust the slope right there for if your roof is pitched, pretty cool. Anyway, we're gonna show you guys how to install these and then uh, I'll just give you a review at the end on how the process went and uh, show you how awesome the system is. Pretty excited. I wanna make a video about this because there's no consumer made videos. If you get on the internet, it's all just the company themselves showing you how to do it and they have installation videos. But I wanted to show you guys just a real life review of uh, how this stuff works. Beautiful place. And uh, this is the reason for the flat roof deck up here. The first thing you wanna do is go to the lowest part of your roof, which in this case is the flat top roof drain. And you're gonna set your laser up so it's just above that. That way your deck's not gonna hit the drain cap. And when you set your laser above that, you get your tallest pedestal and you're gonna screw it up until it meets the laser. And as you can see, top of the tallest pedestal is just above the rooftop drain guard, leaf guard here. So that means the deck will float over it and won't hit the drain guard. So we're doing everything from there. So now we're gonna go over to the far corner where we're starting and you can see the laser level line. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here. We're gonna go over to this far corner and this is the shortest pedestal. The laser line is right there at the height of this lowest pedestal. You basically want your pedestal to adjust up to the level of the laser 
all the way around the perimeter and then your deck will be nice and uh, level. We're on to, I'm not gonna say one of the most critical steps, but we're doing the very first wood tile over here in the corner. This is where we're starting. In order for this wood to butt all the way up to the wall, we have to shave this down right there base plate so what we did we actually shifted this base plate where it's not going to hit the wall over here and on the top you can see it's going to hit the wall so we're going to hack that off right there to make sure we're doing it perfect we screwed in the base plate perfectly into place that way it doesn't move while we're cutting it and uh, that's what we're going to try And you can see we trimmed the base off to be under the deck. We're gonna trim this tab off and we should be good to go. Yeah, that's good. All right. And there it is, folks. There it is. We haven't leveled anything yet, but we're just test fitting the second one really quick. We've got these guys, which are kind of our spacer lock tabs. They make everything you know, go where they should. Yep. Uh -huh. Those basically space the deck boards out so the water drains in between them, those little tabs in there. So we're going to end up removing two of those. They're removable. You cut them out. They say you can smack them with a hammer, but I just used a razor knife. And then those are going to go on here. And this can go underneath. And the reason you cut those tabs out is because the deck would sit on it and be in the way. So you just cut yeah. those out. And you can see those two tabs right there space the wood apart so that water drains in between. And then we'll have our little washer. And the washer is what locks the deck down to the pedestal so like that. So that'll you guys can slide see that. in. And this goes on. Bam. Just, just like, like that. that. <laughs> and then at the end, you'll just sink a screw down in between. And then we move right along. And before you get crazy with this, you want to make sure, number one, that your corner is square. It is square in this house, but I've got these... Uh, if you guys look over here in the corners of this roof, there's all these patches and detail work, which bumps it out a little bit. So over here on our very first board, you can see all the rubber detail right there is bumping out the corner, which is making the board not sit square as you can see here. I actually kind of put it in the corner and stuff it in where it would be sitting. So you want these deck boards pushed in hard against the wall basically to hold it. And you can see how that rotates a whole bunch. It's got a big gap. So we're going to cut off the corner of the board. That way it fits around the rubber and we'll sit nice and square and push into the walls. So we just use a circular saw to cut off that corner a little bit, shape it around the rubber. One thing you wanna be conscious of when you're cutting all this wood is not having any rough edges. So just kinda of taking your saw and making sure uh, there's no burrs or anything that could catch your rubber roof if you're putting this in a rubber roof. We're on to the next step. So we are going to lay out the pedestals and what we're going to do is pre-level them so we're going to get them to match the slope of the roof and uh, get them to the right height might be really dim to see but you guys can see the green line the laser line is right at the top of the pedestal so we're going to spin all these until they meet that laser line and then we're going to orient them so that they're going with the slope and uh, get them as level as we can now this is a normal pedestal this is how they all should look so my slope is one quarter inch per foot so what I'm gonna do is these two tabs right here and right here, you can adjust them really easy. And this adjusts the slope. So when the tabs are all the way apart like this, that's flat, that's zero. And when the tabs are all the way together, that is one half an inch of slope. So that means this is zero in this side, and this is half an inch difference in this side now. Since my roof is only a quarter inch of slope per foot, I only need this tab about halfway. So I go back to zero right there, we're gonna go halfway. And, and you're good to go. So you can see the tabs are 90 degrees apart, which is halfway. So I'm gonna line up the downhill slope right in between these two tabs, and that'll make it slope perfectly towards the rooftop drain. And if you have a two foot level, this is a really quick way to do this. So I'm gonna take my two foot level, put it against the wood over here, and I'll slide this back pedestal over to it's pretty much to the center where the tab is. That's two feet and the planks are two feet so it's a quick way to figure out where to get your pedestal do the same thing here put the two foot level all the way against this tab of this pedestal and slide this one out and put the pedestal insert in the top 
and move it till it's against the, this tab over here. And as you guys can see, that's two feet. The one thing you'll notice is when you're adjusting the pedestals, once you get to the maximum height, it's going to start making a ratcheting sound and won't really allow you to go further. So I'm spinning freely and all of a sudden it catches. And if you go past that catch, it starts ratcheting like that. It gets hard and it ratchets. So make sure to not go past the maximum turn to where it stops like that. And it's a little tricky when there's weight on this, it's harder to feel and hear that. So just pay very close attention to that. So once you get your pedestal about two feet away, about where it needs to be, and you got your slope lined up down the hill, it's really simple. You start spinning this pedestal, which lifts it up. And you're gonna do that until it's level. And what you do if you max out, like right now I just maxed out, I'm gonna take one of these shims right here and we're going to insert it on top of the tab. And that should bump us up about perfect right there. All right guys, here's a little update on the progress. We're kind of moving across here right now. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing really quickly. So right here, I have the proper pedestal. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my slope to one quarter. So where the tabs are 90 degrees apart, I'm gonna point that down towards the rooftop drain. Set that into place. Use my two foot level over here. Put it in between these first two pedestals. You can see how that's out of level, so we're gonna bring it up to level. It's level. We're gonna check the back over here. That should be level, it's perfect. Now we're gonna prep all the washers and screws. That way we can tighten it up real easy later. So I get a washer, screw, put that onto the pedestal. Slip that washer up under these two. And screw down. The same on both these other pedestals. Now we're gonna go get our wood tile. And we're gonna slip the wood tile up into the washer slots. Like so. It takes a little bit of shimming things around to get it in there. And there you go. Make sure these tabs are pressed in tightly to the wood tiles everywhere they're supposed to be. Check every level, it's perfect. Perfect. Once everything's level, you give it a little mallet tap, make sure everything's nice and tight and looks square. And once you've done that, you go ahead and sink that screw. That washer will compress all four of these corners here and lock the boards together. And there you go. Now we're gonna move on to the next one. All right, guys, I thought I'd give you a little update. It's going pretty well right now, uh, mainly because my pedestals, I'm not having to shim them and do all this stuff. I just hit uh, the V3 pedestals, so it's cruising really fast. I just adjust them to the height, level them out, throw the plank on and crank it down a little bit. So it's running nice and smooth. So as soon as you don't have to do any more like the shimming and adding more bases to make it taller, mess around with stuff like that, it starts going pretty quick. This took me, I guess, four hours to get this much. And obviously, I still got a long way to go, but the surface is really nice to walk on. It feels really solid. It's not even locked down yet. It doesn't like shift around or anything. So I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. It is obviously getting dark, got a long way to go, but we got all this, pretty much all this knocked out today. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty solid. Well guys, it's about 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. Check this out. This is really cool. Northern lights are out right here in my hometown. Pretty neat. Let's go up to the rooftop deck and go check them out. And this is why I built a deck on top of the roof. The gorgeous out. Here we are, it's another beautiful day up in the rooftop deck. We are getting started. The wind's not as vicious today. Temperature's dropping, but it's not as cold as it was yesterday, but you can still see there's a little bit of ice. So uh, we need to get this deck on before it snows this next week. You guys can see the snow creeping down the mountains over there. So we are gonna continue on. And uh, just like I was showing you before, as soon as you get everything going and start running across, it starts going really smooth. I actually found it even easier to use the laser level for all the pedestals. You just put the laser level up, spin the pedestal till it meets the laser, 
drop your planks on and start continuing across. Here's another little update, y'all. I'd say we're probably a little over a third done with the deck. Really nice to walk on. So when I'm installing these bison pedestals up against the wall, um, they say in their directions that you're supposed to take the base and just cut one side down so that it fits your corner better. So in this case, I'd take a little bit of EPDM rubber, same roof rubber as the roof, throw it against that so there's a little extra padding. And now you can see that my edge right there fits closer to the wall now. So for all your pedestals that are up against the wall, I'd recommend slicing them like that. That way your support is nice and close to the wall. And what I'm doing, I'm using the laser level to just get this level right on. And then I'm using this at the very end just to double check everything. So we're gonna give it a little tap into place. Make sure everything's seated. And then we're going to lock that into place. All right, guys, we're coming right along. We're currently over in this corner and the wall isn't totally square over here. So I'm having to shave the very edge down a little bit. That way it all stays square all the way around. So over here, I have my tile marked, as you guys can see. And I'm gonna be cutting right along that line right there. Just a little bit, it's not much, maybe a quarter inch. If I was cutting any more than a quarter inch, I would move the bottom plate over a little bit, but I'm just shaving a little bit off it, so it should be fine, and it's all the way against the wall. All righty, now it should fit into place really nicely over here. I'll just show you guys what I've been doing really quick. So we're gonna start off in the corner which I've shaved down the base so it fits all the way against the corner. Next thing I'm gonna do is use the laser level, which is right there, and it's shooting a laser beam right across the top of all these pedestals. So I'm gonna find that. It's right there, it's gonna adjust up a little bit to it. Up there, and that'll just get you in the ballpark. I'll double check it with the level here. Get all the pedestals two feet away exactly. Now I'm gonna take my tile and put the cut in against the wall over here. And I'm gonna slide it into place, like so. Up there, and give it a little tap into place. Make sure it's nice and seated. So I've got it seated, I'm gonna go ahead and lock in that first corner. All right guys, one last little progress report. Sun is going down, very beautiful evening out. Now you can see the laser level here. Uh, you just use that to adjust adjust it right down to where it's hitting the pedestal like that and then we know it's level all the way across you can see how it's hitting all these pedestals here anyway we've still got a lot to do um, as you can see and the trickiest part of it's coming up I have to basically cut the deck tiles to fit this fit around that corner and once I get close to the corner I'm gonna to have to cut all of those along the entire wall and probably that back wall and also around this. So all the cuts are coming up pretty soon, but we're starting to get the meat of it on. Feels awesome too. Super solid and uh, yeah, just feels good. Good morning, y'all. Got another day here. And today is a really special day because it's not quite finished yet, but we're going to start this Honda snowblower for the first time. The one that's gonna live on the rooftop deck. This is the one that lives down here to plow the yard. And uh, you can see it's got these rubber augers that are going to clean the snow off the roof and throw it right off. So we get to get it about 35 feet up in the air. So let's pull it out, fire it up, make sure it's working and uh, fly it up there. Let's make sure it's got fuel. I don't think it has any fuel. Well, it turns out there's no fuel, so. We're gonna get some. I don't know if you guys know anything about Honda snowblowers, but I had the HS80 and it was an absolute beast. I got it used from like the late 1980s 
and uh, this is a little newer one. It's a uh, one stage, so there's not a second thing that breaks up the snow up here. It's just the bottom auger, but it should work great for the deck. So let's uh, put some fuel in it, and hopefully it fires up. I haven't even started it yet. I am gonna have to be extremely careful uh, when I pour fuel into this on that rooftop deck. Um, I might even get an electric snowboard down the road, we'll see, but the gas power just, there's actually enough juice to get the snow off the roof, so. All right, guys, here we are on another day. This might be day four. And as you can see, I've gotten the meat of the deck done, but now we are getting to the most complicated part. So we get the majority of it run, but now we're going to start doing some cuts. So we're doing everything from here on out will be custom cut. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this corner here. This is obviously where everybody is going to be stepping. So one thing I'm gonna do is use some of my rubber shims here just to pat it out, make it a little quieter. And uh, everything's nice and level. So now what we're gonna do is get our tape measure and we're going to take a measurement of how much we need to cut this tile. So all the tiles are exactly 23 and 7 eighths by 23 and 13 sixteenths. So they're a little less than 24. So we're gonna get an exact measurement here and cut these tiles to fit. And obviously they need to be tied against the wall. I'm going to be doing metal siding here. It's gonna be come down box rib metal. So I need to space these off the wall just a little bit. That way there's room for the metal to get down and I'll just shim them out for now to hold them in place. We're gonna go up to the metal here over the tab and it looks like 20 and 3 eighths is what we're gonna cut the tile to. and three-eighths. We're gonna use our two-foot level across both of our 20-foot and three-eighths marks. Now we're gonna use a circular saw to cut that line at 20 and three-eighths right there. And next thing I'm gonna do is take a sander to the edge just to make sure it's nice and smooth since that will be up against the rubber membrane for the time being. We're in business to see if it fits here. This is our cut side up here. We're gonna place the cut side against the house. You can see the corner piece over here. A little bit tricky. I had to cut the side because it wasn't quite square. And then I had to cut the back to fit. So it's a double cut, but it's in there nice and solid. And uh, now we're gonna continue on with those same cuts and do some minor adjustments. But now the width should be good at least. So I just need to cut the length of the board. We're cruising right along. We're all the way from wall to wall over here. These are all those weird cut pieces. This is gonna be one of the trickier pieces. It's gonna go around the corner. So I measured from this plank to the wall on both sides. It's pretty much square, it's pretty close. And then I measured over to where the wall ends. And that's what I came up with right there. See, we can cut along that line, along this line, because the wall is right there. And then I'm gonna have this little tiny strip. It's gonna run all the way back, unfortunately, but that's what we're gonna do. And here's our board. So we're gonna set her into place, see how she fits. Nice. It's gonna go right in. Awesome, so awesome. Fits in nice and tight right around the corner. We're gonna run this one strip all the way against the wall. But right now, we're around that worst part so we can just start running this row right on across. Good morning, y'all. Thought I'd give you a little update. So we are just about completely done with the bison decking system. Looks awesome, it's obviously cold up here. However, we are to the most difficult part. I did one of the difficult parts when I hit this corner, had to cut both sides of the board because things weren't square, like the edges of the house weren't square, essentially. Cut the deck around this corner, that was a tricky piece, and so now we're gonna run a really skinny piece along this wall. 
all the way to the end. And then all these are, tiles are basically cut in half all the way to this side. And I'll cut this corner piece. And we'll run all along this wall. Another corner piece, another corner piece, one final corner piece. So basically just the outsides of the deck we're gonna do. This is day five of putting the deck on. One thing I've done with this roof is use heat tape, as you guys saw. So every now and then, where the heat tape is, where I secured it to the flat roof, the pedestal happens to be right in the way. So I've gotta cut my heat tape loose and just remount it to the floor right there. That way it's not in the way of the pedestal. You can see my corner piece. Um, it's gonna be a little bit weird because I've got the long skinny piece. So I need to make sure that there's a place for the long skinny piece to rest and for the big large tile to rest right there. So let's get that in and we'll keep on moving. Cruising around and you can see how all these panels are just about cut in half against the wall and they're pushed really firmly in. So what I did is I'll stuff this side down first and then I'll step in this back side and push it in and it just tightens everything up. So it's rock solid all the way across. So the deck right now is locked back to forward. It's already locked in really good. And once we run this wall over here, it's gonna lock it laterally this way. What I'm doing for just extra security and just to make sure everything really stays down because it gets really windy out here, I'm actually locking the outer rim down with these wood screws right here. They're basically two inch trim head wood screws. It's basically just four screws you have to take out to get a panel out, so it's really not that bad, and it just really locks it down. You also notice that I've turned the pedestals upside down against the edge. It's because the bottom circumference is not as large as the top, so it fits up against the wall better. The bottom doesn't hit the wall, and uh, the top goes all the way to the wall. Like I was saying, I've cut the tile to fit, so what I do is line it up and slide this side towards me in first, and Lower it down and see how it's catching the wall. When I push down, it's going to push everything this way and lock it in nice and tight. Right there. Nice and solid. Really, I don't even have to screw it down, but I'm going to sink some screws for a little added measure of security. These little trim head screws fit perfectly in between that slot, so they're not exposed. You can't really see them on top of the deck. They're kind of down in there. And these are really thin, so I'm not pre-drilling the wood. But if you're using screws any thicker than these, which is uh, number eight, then you probably want to pre-drill this wood. I did try to put a thicker screw through the wood earlier, and it split the wood. So uh, I'm comfortable with this size, but yeah, if you're going to use a larger diameter screw, make sure to pre-drill. Now I'm in this little corner piece right there. It's pretty small. It's only about 14 inches by about 17 inches. So I've cut it out to fit. And you'll notice that there needs to be a support. Obviously the pedestal is under the end of the tile. So I need to make sure that there's a support on the end of this tile. So I'm just gonna take it off of this one and put it right there. And I'm gonna pre-drill all these holes so I don't split the wood. Now I'm gonna take this and see all the holes in there. I'm gonna line it up. I found this out the hard way. The very first tile that I tried to cut around the corner, I removed the slat with the screws still in it. I put it over where I wanted to and I sunk it into place and it started splitting the wood. So you have to pre-drill this wood because these wood screws right here are just too thick. Yeah, obviously this is a pain. It takes a while, but if you do it right the first time, you never have to do it again. Now I've got it installed correctly, so when you flip it over, you'll notice that uh, I didn't drill deep enough right there, so the wood actually split. That's why it's important to pre-drill with these thicker wood screws. They'll split the wood like that. Unfortunately, that's just how it is, and that's how it's going in. Luckily, it's over in the corner, so it's in a good spot at least. Well, guys, guess what? <laughs> it's freaking done. Rooftop deck is done. That was a lot of work. Took me five days, but we got her. These are already pre-cut, ready to drop in. I'm just waiting on this red metal. Um, this is where the chimney pokes out. There'll be a red sheet metal, like the roof up there. It's gonna run down and some flashing that goes down the wall here. And once I get that flashing on next week, I'll put the wood planks in and push them into the flashing just like this. That way they're not rubbing in the rubber. We got it though. Pretty cool. Overall, the Bison system is awesome. 
There was some hiccups, as you guys saw, where I had to shim everything up with Trex. And uh, I don't know what happened there. That was just some, mis some miscommunication between myself and the CAD team, apparently, at Bison. But uh, it doesn't matter. Figured it out. Still an awesome system. And made it work. And it's going to be sweet. The reason I went for a large deck is because I'd like to host a little bit of live music every now and then. We'll see. In the summertime. But yeah. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm.